of God. Last week, the babies told us about the lineage of Jesus. Little Christiana, she's not here right now, but she sang, man, she sang Mary did up the house. You see, the lyrics consist of several questions directed to Mary, such as, Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? The songwriter asks, did you know that your baby boy has come to make us new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. That's powerful. Mary, did you know? I wonder if she knew. So we celebrate the birth of Christ by giving gifts and overeating on fatty foods and sugary treats. Amen? Come on, y'all. Now, don't act like it's just me. Y'all know we love Thanksgiving and Christmas because back to back we get to eat greasy dressing and turkey and sweet potatoes and all that good stuff. And then what we do in January? We go on the diet and we make a bunch of resolutions. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but I wonder if Mary really knew. I wonder if Mary really knew that when she pushed that final push, that life would never be the same for the entire world. I wonder if Mary knew that once she pushed, the captives would be set free. According to Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 71, and I'm not going to ask you to turn to it because I'm going to go to different scriptures. Um, but when she pushed, she delivered the one and only one who could save us from our enemies. That would save, she pushed out the one that would save us from the hands of those who hate us. Isn't that something? makes you kind of wonder, why do we even worry? When Mary pushed, did she know that she would be fulfilling the words of the prophets long before she was born? <laughs> that we might be able to serve our God without fear. When Mary pushed, did she know that she would one day open up my own mother's barren womb through the anointed hands of evangelist Sally Pitts Little from Holy Mission Church of God in Christ on the west side of Chicago. <laughs> Did she know that when she pushed over 2,000 years ago, that a young woman by the name of Sally K. Carter would be diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, better known as MS? That the doctors would tell her, you need to prepare yourself for disability, and you will never be able to walk again. That was only four years ago. I wonder when Mary pushed, did she know? I wonder, did she know? Amen. Did she know that because she pushed, I was able to look the doctors in the face, dead square in the eye, and say, not so? Because that's not how my story is going to end. See, I serve a man named Jesus. And on that cold winter's night, my healing was delivered. Oh, yeah, all that happened when Mary pushed. How many of you have ever given birth before? Amen. It's a lot of us in here. If you have not, how many of you have ever witnessed a birth before? Amen. You witnessed it. Something to see. Okay. How many of you were born of a woman? Amen. That's all of us, right? So we're all included in this. I don't want to leave anybody else, anybody out today. So if you know anything about delivery, then you know that there is that, that is a painful process. It's a painful process before delivery called labor, right? And labor must happen first before we can deliver, amen? It amazes me how, how many women can carry life on the inside of her for nine months, sacrificing her own wants and desires in order to protect an unborn purpose. How even though she knows the process for labor and delivery is pretty much a standard procedure, and no matter how much she prepares, when the time comes to deliver, labor pains will hit. And oh my gosh, hallelujah. Can I get a witness when labor pains hit? I don't care how much you prepared. I don't care how much you studied, how much you read, hallelujah. When labor pains hit, you almost want to say, I want to run the other way, get me off the table, or get this out of me. I don't care how nice and calm you are, when labor pains hit, 
you, you it's like you're a metamorphosis. You, the transformers, that one sweet little docile woman becomes like a dragon. Hallelujah. And the men and, and those who are around the support just know to go, okay. Like, like just, okay. <laughs> All that rubbing you practice, don't touch me. <laughs> Amen. And even though, even though Mary was prepared and aware of the pain of labor, she looked forward to delivery because she thought about her cute little baby. Amen. Mothers, we think about how cute they gonna be and how they gonna smell. Oh, and they little toes. That's the first thing we wanna do is look at they little toes. Right? And, and Mary, she was joyous. She was looking forward to delivering her firstborn child. And why wouldn't she? After all, Gabriel, an angel of the Lord, had come to her, according to Luke chapter 1, verse 31, saying, you shall deliver a son, and he shall be called Jesus. So he already had a name. He already, before he was even formed, he already had the name. And he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Who wouldn't want to deliver with a promise like that? <laughs> if you knew that the child you were going to carry or that you were even carrying was going to be great and all these things, wouldn't you be excited for delivery? Who would consider labor? Who would consider that process, right? But what? Mary did not know was that her sweet baby boy, her firstborn, would be persecuted and hated, all while performing great miracles, signs, and wonders. That when Mary pushed, she did not know that her son was sent to save his people from their sins. When Mary pushed, she did not know that upon her baby's death, he would reappear in those who believe like you and I. When Mary pushed, John 1, 16 and 17 says, and of his fullness have all we received, a grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. This happened all when Mary pushed. I looked up the word grace, and one definition says, simple elegance or refinement of movement. This is about how people see you. Amen? But then there's another definition that says, and Bishop, you touched on it a little bit, that grace is the free and unmerited favor of God as manifested in the salvation of sinners and the bestowal of blessings. How many of y'all want a little bit of grace? Just a little, I'll take just a little bit of God's unmerited favor on my life. Let me tell you something. I know that BT and VH1 and all these stars have us looking at what we consider grace on their lives because it seemed like everything's so great. Like the big thing now is Cardi B and Offset. Everybody watching there. Anybody know Cardi B and Offset? Or is everybody safe up in here? <laughs> Hallelujah. It, all, all, don't nobody watch nothing but the Word Channel up in here? Y'all need to quit playing. Amen. But, but, but see, what, 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 that's not truth. Because what that does is have our kids glamorizing falsehood. And, and our, not just our children, because some of us, hallelujah, some of us are looking at them like, I want that life, I want that. But that's so temporary. That's such a persona. We want God's unmerited grace. We want God's unmerited favor. We want the blessings bestowed on us that can't nobody take away. Hallelujah, because somebody gets upset and mad. One day you on a pedestal, one day you so great, one day everybody looking at you shining, that kind of grace, mm, temporary. But I want the kind of grace that can't nobody touch me, because what God has for me, it is for me. Don't you want the kind of grace that when God showers his favor on you, can't nobody touch you? The kind of grace that says that no weapon that's been formed against me shall be able to prosper, because all of this is mine. How do I know? Because Mary pushed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't come here to play this morning, y'all. I know I'm a little calm and mellow. 
because I'm trying to be cool. But let me tell you something. For the past three days since Thursday, I have not put one bite of food in my mouth. And I say this not for glory and praise unto y'all. I say this giving this glory unto God. Because when God assigned me to put down my plates, to fast and to pray, what I saw was a, a train of people coming in, running to give their life to God. And the word of God says some of these things only come out and get through through fasting and praying. And if I got to be called to stand in the gap so that you can come in to be a part of this family of the kingdom, I don't mind turning down my plate. Because guess what? I know God gave me the unmerited grace to do so. Because not one time did my stomach growl. Not one time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. I came to deliver. I came to ensure that not none of you walk out of here the same way you walked in. And I know people watching on social media. I know you, some of you are at Bedside Baptist. You're watching this and, and while you're chilling in your bed. That's okay because God can touch you while you're warm and cozy up under those covers. God can touch you while you're driving in your car. God can touch you while you got your earphones in in a grocery store. Hallelujah. He's omnipotent. He's omnipotent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I came to be your midwife. I came to help you push. Hallelujah. I came to help you push. Hallelujah. John 1, 12 says, but as you receive him, to them gave he power to become the, to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Do you understand all you have to do is believe? Just believe. It's that simple. Just believe. I know there's a lot of rules and, you know, covenants that we think of when we think of the church. But this isn't about church. This is about relationship. This is about your life. Hallelujah. This is about your life. And I want to make sure you become a part of this family. There are three groups of people, I believe. The ones who already know him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, where you at? Yeah. The ones who want to know him. Hallelujah. And the ones who are searching. If you are already, if you already know the Lord as your personal savior, I need you to start praying right now. I need you to help me become a spiritual midwife, a spiritual doula. So right now, in this second, in this moment, start giving God praises on behalf of your sisters and brothers that will be coming before the end of this service. Hallelujah. Where my midwives at? Hallelujah. 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 We give praise in advance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you want to see them come? Do you want them to be a part of this family? Do you? This side of the room. Do you want them to be a part of this family? Let's start praising right now. Let's give God glory right now. For their salvation. Let's God give God glory right now for their soul. Let's give God glory right now because they are now part of the family. Before they even come up here at the end of the service, before this broadcast may be over, they are already welcome in the family. Let's celebrate them. Hallelujah. 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 We're coming for groups two and three. We're coming for you because when Mary pushed, she delivered you from the hand of the enemy. When Mary pushed, hope was delivered. Faith was restored. Abundant living was activated when Mary pushed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews 3.15 says, when you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Hallelujah. I know the journey is sometimes uncomfortable. Some of you are going through trials and pains right now in this very moment. But I came to tell you that if you want an assurance that everything is going to be all right, if you want a money back guarantee on your life, tell God yes. Hallelujah. We're here for you. Bishop told us last week, he said we're here to help you. Hallelujah. We want to see you delivered. We're here for you. Hallelujah. We're cheering for you. We're praying you through. Hallelujah. We're your cheerleaders. We're pushing like Mary pushed over 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. God says, I want you. He says, I waited for you. God says, I love you. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. God says, I want you. I was born for you. I died for you, but I had to be born first. And I came for you because I love you so much. I love you so much. What do you want? God says, what do you want? Do you need provision? He said, my word plus faith equals done. Why y'all make it so hard? Right? My word plus faith is done. Philippians 4.19 says, God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and his glories. But you got to be mine, God says. I want to supply you, but you've got to be mine. Hallelujah. All those times that you said, I don't know how I got through that. I don't know how I made it through. God says, yep, yeah, that was me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yep, yeah, that's it. That was me. God said, remember that time you wanted me to make a way out of no way? You believed that I would at that time. You know, how, come on, y'all. Come on. Y'all, I'm going to step away from no. You know how we do. We going through something. Then our faith is like, whoa. <laughs> like gigantic. When we going through something, we get to fall on our knees and we get to praying. We got, we got to call the hot lines. We want everybody to pray for us then, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because then we believe. <laughs> we believe according to Isaiah 43 and 19 when he said, I will put a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Because I keep my word. Hallelujah. When Mary pushed, as Jesus left one dimension to another, Mary began to feel excruciating pain. Y'all bear with me here. You know that pain you feel. When you lose a loved one, it's an unbearable pain. Mary began to feel that over 2,000 years ago. The pain you feel when your body is fighting a terminal illness, Mary started feeling that pain all of a sudden, that promise of that baby didn't look so good. Hallelujah. But she couldn't turn away. You know that pain you feel when you're going through a horrible divorce? And it seems like everything you committed your life to, all of a sudden, is just over. I don't understand this. Well, how about our young people, or even us adults, the pain we feel when we're being bullied at school or, or at work? You want to say, forget it. I cannot do this. No, I'm being too proper. I can't do this. I don't want to do this. This hurts too much. I'm not even going to open my eyes. But there's no turning back. So you see, over 2,000 years ago, that little baby boy whose name was already Jesus, he heard somebody crying in the middle of the night, y'all. And when baby Jesus started hearing the cries, and he heard his name, he started turning. He said, oh, well, I'm comfortable here. Y'all know how... Dr. Dillard, you know how the baby's in the womb, they all, and we look on the ultrasound, they got their little thumb. Jesus was comfortable. And just because he's Jesus, he came in human form, so he experiences our feelings. Jesus was comfortable. He was comfortable and cozy, but he heard somebody saying, help, Jesus. And with every cry, he turned. He turned. He began to kick. The more you cried, he kicked because it was time to transform. See, I believe that Jesus heard the cries of the people, the cries of the love corner. When we said, not our mother, Gwen. Oh, absolutely not. It's not her time yet. I believe the Lord heard you when you was on your knees, Bishop. And he said, not, when you said, not my honey, not today. I still need her. I believe the Lord heard my cry when I said, this is not my life. I believe God heard some of your cries when you said, Lord Jesus, in the cries when you can't even explain the situation, all you can do is say, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus, hallelujah, Woo. so he heard the prayers, and he began to move even more, hallelujah, because he heard us say, the, 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 the blessing I need, God, only you can give it to me. I'm going to the doctor, I go to the counselor, I go to the psychiatrist, I even go to church, Lord. But Lord, I need something that only you can give me. So Jesus, hallelujah, we need you, Jesus. So I believe the, the spirit of the Lord, the baby Jesus heard us say, we need you to tell your mother Mary to push. Hallelujah. We need Mary to push on our behalf. Hallelujah. And as he began to shift, hallelujah, his entire body, the pain became so great that Mary lost control to the point that she just got in position. Anybody at that point 
Well, you like, I'm losing control. I just might as well get in position. They already told me the answer. All I got to do is say yes, right? Bishop already told me going to help you, right? God already said and promised he'll meet us where we at, right? Hallelujah. So all we got to do is get in position. So I believe down in my little sanctified soul that Mary began to get in position. Y'all know it's a certain place, a certain way you got to be when you're getting ready to birth, right? That means you got to turn off the phone sometime. The people you used to talk to all the time, you can't talk to them. The stuff you used to put on Facebook, you got to start shifting. You got to start getting into position because you ready for a thing. You got some things on the table. You have been asking God for some things. He been promising you for some things and you ready for your deliverance. How many of y'all ready for your deliverance? So you got to start getting in position. The things you used to do. Now I'm not telling you got to totally transform because that's God's job. Sometimes we in God's business a little bit too much. We think we got to perfect ourselves like he need our help. But God don't need your help. All he needs you to do is say yes. yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He just needs you to say yes. In that moment, the spiritual midwives and the doulas start to pray. Amen. They begin to encourage you to hold on. They begin and they do. Right? Because it's continuous. We have to pray without ceasing. So in that, a few minutes ago, I asked you to start praying. But I know you're constantly praying. We're constantly praying. We're constantly seeking God because it's a lifestyle, right? So this is what I want to do. I want to make sure, again, that we're prepared for those souls to come. Where are my spiritual midwives at? I'll make some noise for my spiritual midwives. Make some noise, my, my doulas. Hallelujah. So all of y'all on the count of three, I want y'all to yell, push, okay? So one, two, three, push. Hallelujah. Give God some glory. Hallelujah. I believe then baby Jesus heard the cries of millions of people crying out about the state of the condition of the world. Even 2,000 years ago, Jesus heard us crying. And he said, he reminded us to continue. In 2 Chronicles 7, 14, he said, if my people who are called by my name will turn from their ways and seek my face and pray, then will I hear from heaven and heal the land. Jesus said, I hear your voice. I hear your cries. Hold on, I'm on my way. I'm about to tell my mama Mary, it's time for her to push. I'm comfortable where I'm at now. I really don't want to go, but I hear the cries of my people. And I know I heard I had a purpose of why I came into the earth. And the purpose was for me to save you and to deliver you. That means I can't stay comfortable in the state that I'm in. I need you to understand when Mary pushed, she didn't just push out the little baby Jesus. She pushed you out. She pushed your purpose out. And God is saying, you can't stay where you at another minute. You can't stay where you at not another second. It's time for you to be delivered. And when God says, I'm about to be delivered, that means you're going to be delivered too. Hallelujah. I know I'm not a great storyteller like our great Bishop Gwen. But I do believe down on my soul that Jesus began to wiggle in the womb just a little bit more than usual. And at that time, that was the internal alarm that told Mary it was time to to push. I believe it was time for sicknesses to be healed. It was time for relationships to be mended. It was time for eternal life to be promised. Oh, when Mary pushed. You no longer have to suffer in silence. Mary pushed for you. God wants you to have abundant life. And he made it easy for you. You simply have to believe. And you have to simply say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because Mary pushed for the salvation of you and I. God bless you.